Hello everyone, we're going to look today paper texture. We have in Painter a few different brushes. Some of them are texture aware and some of them are not texture aware. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, just a few of them just to understand what I'm talking about. So we have, for example, on the dry medium like charcoal and pastel and pencil, we have brushes which are texture aware. We can even see on the preview, we can have an idea that this brush is texture aware. So at the moment we start working with it, we see this paper look. And if I go to something more liquid, like for example, if I go to acrylic colors or gouache, usually at the moment I start working with it, I just get something that looks quite flat, we don't see any texture. So texture uh, aware medium are really nice. They have a very beautiful aesthetic. And if you start collecting some papers and you start organizing a library with your own textures, it's going to enrich a lot to your work. So first to start understanding what I'm talking about, I'm just going to a window, paper. If you want a shortcut, it's command nine. And I'm going back to my Eckig Heart variant and I'm going to explain you what happens if we are working with a texture aware medium. So here on uh, our paper library we can see we have a few different papers which come with painter. Some are kind of fantasy papers and some of them really reproduces um, papers that you can buy on shops like aquarel paper and canvas and some kind of drawing paper and so on. So if we get a close look to um, the paper structure, we would have here mountains and valleys. At the moment we start painting and we do like a little bit of pressure, we're going to just get the top of the mountains with color. If you make a bit more pressure, you're going to have it a bit further painted. And at the moment you do even more pressure. We're going to have it almost till the bottom of the mountain, but we're always going to see a little bit of white, which represents the valleys. We have the possibility as well in Painter to not only bring up color to the top of the mountain in a nomogenic way, we would as well be able to say, I would like to have only the right side of the mountain painted as if I would really be working with analogous paper. Or if you would like to bring some color to the other side of the mountain, it would be possible as well. This is an option that you can select and we're going to see how it works quite soon. And if you would say, okay, but uh, I would not like to have the valleys um, with uh, the white color of the paper. I would like to have an extra color just for the valleys. You can as well just turn the valleys into mountains and the mountains into valleys and add a color to it. So it would just be painting the valleys of the papers. We're going to give a closer look to this. I'm selecting it all and I'm deleting and I'm bringing back my paper to the original position. I have to get used to be working always on an extra layer and not on the first layer. And looking at the papers that we have here, we have the possibility of working different textures, different paper textures on the same image. So this is something that I would never be able to really do it on paper unless you make like a collage of different papers, which is quite hard. And we can see that I have all the time exactly the same brush and I have very different brush aesthetics coming through. So it's very important at the moment to start working with paper, not only to remember which brush you were using, but as well which paper you were using. And we have uh, a few different things that we can change on paper structure. The first thing uh, to remember is the default number that we have for the size of the structure is 
the paper contrast is 100% and the luminosity from the paper is always on 50%. This is a number that you have to remember. The default is always 100, 150. So if you're not working with the default, it's good as well to maybe make a mind notice that uh, you're working with a different information on the paper. And we're going just to see what this does. I'm going to increase the texture of the paper and I'm going to reduce the texture of the paper and we can see the difference already just by making this tiny little change. Another thing that you can be aware is, for example, it happens very often that because of uh, increasing the texture of the paper, we get uh, quite blurry result. And uh, if you increase the contrast, this blurry result disappears. So if you have the impression that you're working on a paper and this paper is too blurry, increase the contrast uh, and you're going to have it less blurry. If you say, okay, you can see already here the difference between both of them. Um, it could happen that if you're working with a 300 pixel per inch image and you work with a paper that is not very strong on contrast, that for certain reason you may have a kind of blurry image as a result. And if you increase the contrast, you're already making this disappear, which is quite good. So another option would be to make a paper darker or make a paper lighter. And we saw here at the beginning, we have a few papers which are very, very light. So for you to see the structure a little bit stronger, maybe you would need to decrease the luminosity of the paper, increase a little bit the contrast, maybe not too much because it's good as well to be working on this gray scale. Everything that is gray gets a lot of color. If you have a lot of white, it gets less color. And to rem remind you that working with a Wacom or working with a tablet and uh, using a pen, you should always be careful not to do too much pressure. Okay, you should regulate your pen so that if you do very little pressure, you get a little bit of uh, a middle tone and at the moment you start making pressure you get it really dark but not having to do too much pressure on the screen to have this full color uh, image is very important because if you do too much pressure on the screen at a certain moment you're going to be scratching your screen and destroying it i'm going to show you soon uh, what i mean about that in a much shorter video so that you can just click on that every single time you have to regulate your pen so here we have a very good example of paper to uh, understand what I was talking about before. This paper, when I start painting on it, I touch really the, the top of the mountains in a very homogenic way. And if I go to Richtung Umschalten, this is the first arrow, I'm going to be seeing much less of the paper texture. It means that I'm touching all the time depending from which direction I go on the paper, I'm touching always this one direction. So I'm just going to zoom in a lot and I'm going to increase a lot the size of my paper. And first understand this a tiny little bit better. So I have the green paper. Uh, I should really calibrate it first. I don't think this is going to work so well. At the moment I go from one side and to the other. We can see here already a few differences. Uh, doop, doop, doop. I'm going to do this very smoothly. So we can see here that I'm touching the top of the hill in depending on the direction I'm using my pen. This was what I was explaining just shortly before. And if I say, well, okay, I don't like this so much. I would like to have it homogenically. You can see as well here the extra that comes by using the direction of the stroke. And I would say, okay, I don't want to have the color just on the top of the mountains. I would like now to touch the valleys as well with an extra color. We can use the umkehren umschalten. So the second arrow image, we can see that at the moment we touch it, we are just changing the valleys into mountains and the mountains into valleys. And now I can 
just fill up all the area that stayed white okay so you can change as well the angle of the paper i just grab another color so that uh, if you have a paper with a certain structure that depends on the direction like you have here some kind of grainy wood direction like grainy wood paper i don't think it's this one but this has a very strong paper direction you could just really change the angle of it and work as well with the angle of the paper which sometimes is quite useful if you're working this kind of uh, with this kind of structure my advice is uh, you are able to transform any black and white image into paper structure so start collecting images start using maybe your camera from your mobile phone because you don't really need a very high resolution to do so and start taking photos from things that you would say this could make a nice paper structure sometimes very smooth structures like nothing very strong like a marble or some wood structure or maybe some stains on the ground can give you a very very beautiful texture we're going to be having some other tutorials about this but just keep in mind we have a few different brushes which works not only with structure but as well without structure to make a very beautiful combination uh, between these two different medias have fun and try a little bit out okay bye bye